All right, good morning. Back up here with patches again. And we're gonna attempt to do a ride this morning and see how much soaked in from her come to God conversation. She was a little bit tough to catch this morning in the round pen, so we worked a little bit harder to convince her that running around in there wasn't such a great idea either. And then we just saddled her up and brought her out here. And she's pretty saddled at the moment. But I got Huckleberry the stud standing right there. And, I, and the two mares with the foal are right inside the gate, just like the other foal was, or the other yearling was yesterday. So my plan is to just kind of work her out here a little bit. And I'm going to crawl on facing away from this stud and the barn door there. And I'm going to give her the choice to either head down the driveway or head over there to those horses. And if she heads over there to those horses, see that? And if she heads over there to those horses, then we're going to have another meeting of the minds. Uh, you know, folks can talk about barn sour and buddy sour, herd bound, whatever you want to call it, and give you all the great fixes for it. But the bottom line is these are herd animals, and if you allow them to associate with a certain herd all the time and don't establish yourself within that herd, they're going to go right back to doing what it is that horses naturally do. And in an environment like this, it's hard to keep her completely isolated from other horses. So it makes it that much tougher to try and break that cycle of wanting to be with their buddies, especially on an older mare or an older gelding, older horse in particular, that has been allowed to get spoilt and get a lot of and have a lot of issues with respect all along. And that just magnifies the situation because they're not looking to you to be that partner and that herd leader. They're looking to these other horses for support and that's really what it's all about. So everything that I'm doing up here with her and all the meetings we've had together to try and get her mind squared away again to where she's not so likely to want to stick around the barn here, that'll all go away in a few days if the owner doesn't keep up with it and not allow her to go through or follow and not allow her to follow through with the crap that she does, like backing up and whatnot. Now, I never had an issue with that after the first day until or come to God meeting when I was standing down here and I wouldn't let her go back, just go right back up to the barn. And then she started getting mad. She swapped ends and wanted to frickin' back away from things. And that's when it all started. And then it just, you know, kind of went on from there as far as her wanting to go up to the barn and not listen to me and not, not stop where I wanted to stop or stand where I wanted to stand. And, and so, and it sometimes it takes a long time on a session like that. This one, the last one we did was about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. And you got to be prepared for that amount of time that it's going to take when you do something like this. Because if you're not, and you quit before you make some progress, you're just going to make things worse. So. Hopefully, we've made some progress with her and made some sense with her. And she's not going to be so likely to trip off the line today. But if she does, you got to be prepared.
to follow through. driveway and see what kind of trouble she gives me or if she changes her mind come back to the barn. If you see me coming back at a lope you'll know the reason. <laughs> 